Hi everyone, and welcome to today's oil painting time lapse and studio sessions episode 26. Oh, and in the spirit of the holidays, I've decided to have a special sale at my website. So for a limited time, you can get 15% off and a free mystery gift with any order. The code is HOLIDAY and you can redeem it at happyd-artist.com and it ends December 25th. Today's video is brought to you by the awesome folks at squarespace.com, which I have been using for the last two years to build and host my website, and I'm still completely in love with it. So whether you need a domain, website, online store, make your next move with Squarespace. Start your free trial today at squarespace.com and go to squarespace.com slash happydartist to get 10% off your first purchase. Okay, on to today's painting. So before I get started with the topic of discussion, I wanted to quickly chat about this piece. Um, as you can see here, I started off with a wash of a medium gray color just to kind of establish the values and encourage a more opaque layer of colors for my first layer. Uh, I was greatly inspired and encouraged by my dear friend Lena Dania who does this a lot in her paintings as well. So big shout out and hugs to Lena, you are awesome. And if you guys haven't seen her channel, you should check out Lena Dania on YouTube. It's L-E-N-A-D-A-N-Y-A. -A -A. Okay, so today's topic of discussion is complementary to a previous video I made in which I talked about some bad artist habits to avoid. So I thought today I would supplement it with some good artist habits that you should try to adopt in order to, I guess, just have an easier time growing both creatively and skill-wise. And these aren't really physical habits as much as they are kind of mental outlooks or like ways of tweaking your thinking and your attitude. So these are tips that over the years I have found useful for myself. Um, I didn't read these from any blogs or tutorials or websites or books. These are things that I kind of just realized grew in myself. So it is Again, based on personal experience, feel free to disagree with me, but I hope you guys found these tips, will find these tips useful. So my first tip on how to have a great outlook for artistic growth is to actually be okay with slightly negative feelings. And I don't mean feelings of discouragement or self-deprecation, but what I mean is be okay with feelings of boredom or disappointment because especially when you're trying to get good at a certain skill and you're on your way to improving, you will find that most of the time it will kind of disappoint you, meaning you're not going to magically get better every single day and accelerate every single time. There's going to be ups and downs and much like the life cycle of a painting, um, the life cycle of your artistic growth will sometimes start off a bit rough and messy and unpredictable and you might not have a lot of confidence in where it may lead. But then over time, as you invest more time and more effort into it, it starts to form a tangible shape. It starts to look hopeful. You start being able to see the potential. So you have to be okay with those initial feelings of disappointment and perhaps a little bit of um, fear because you don't know if you're making enough progress. You don't know if you're doing things right, but you just have to trust and be confident in the fact that it will get better. Your paintings will get better. Your skills will get better. Your creativity will get better. And um, also to touch on the, the board side of things, a lot of times learning isn't always a fun process. There are things you have to do that might not be the most exciting or innovative or fun. You know, you might have to sit at your desk and do exercises, drawing the same thing over and over again until you get it right. And getting used to that feeling of repetition and kind of confronting your mistakes it's not always going to be happy-go-lucky. Sometimes you will be bored and sometimes you, you will feel like it's very tedious and sometimes you will feel scared and discouraged and disappointed. But these are all feelings that you have to realize aren't bad. They're simply a part of the process and you have to harness them and channel them into working harder and being more productive. Also a great habit I have is to make art one of your top priorities. It's really hard to balance 
an art career or even an art hobby with other avenues of your life, especially if you're a student or you're working or you're a parent or any situation that requires your time. But if you truly do want to get better, you really have to make time in your schedule for it. You have to sacrifice, I always say this, but sacrifice fun social activities to make time to focus on your art. Also, a great artist habit is to learn from many teachers and many different resources. Much like your health, um, it's always good to get a second or third or fourth or fifth opinion on things. So if you find one tutorial, that's great. If you can find multiple tutorials to teach you similar things, you can pick and choose the most helpful parts of each one to create an artistic style or an artistic process that's more unique to yourself. Like I mentioned before in my Bad Artist Habits video, one of the biggest downfalls of learning and being inspired is to stick too closely to one person or one source because that is when your style starts to emulate someone else's and you don't give yourself the opportunity to consider all the options and help yourself grow individually. So make sure you learn from many different teachers. Also, just try to be more curious and open about the world around you. I feel like artists see the world through such a unique lens. It's very different from someone who's not as creative. I think artists are constantly on the lookout for inspiration, for even a small seed of something that could spark into an idea. So even when you're going out about with your day, whether it's going for a walk or at the grocery store or at school or watching a movie, Always try to keep your mind in a place where you will be ready at a moment's notice to either come up with an idea or jot down the idea. Always carry a sketchbook with you. If you don't have a sketchbook, for me, I like to just use my phone. And the one biggest tip I have, and I always say this for avoiding artist block, is to have ideas ready at your disposal. Have a reservoir of unpainted, unsketched ideas that you have accumulated throughout your day and throughout your life. So be curious and be open and be on the lookout for little signs of creativity and inspiration. Also, you have to practice with intent. What I mean by that is if you're serious about becoming an artist or improving as an artist, instead of just practicing and doodling and having fun, which, you know, of course is important you do have to have fun but when you practice have a small goal in mind you know before you sit down on your desk maybe think today i really want to get better at shading or today i need to work on my anatomy and if you have even a small one or a few um, little goals in mind when you sit down and practice or work on a piece you'll find that your mind will naturally shift towards thinking about those things and recognizing areas where you can improve, areas where you've done really well. And for me, it works way better than just doodling for fun. Of course, you know, there is definitely a time and a place to doodle for fun without any pressure or any stress and just kind of using art as a cathartic way of you know, releasing some emotions or relaxing. But for your practice sessions in which you want to focus on improving, always have a few small goals. Practice with intent. And lastly, this might seem counter um, to counteract everything I just said earlier, but try to have fun. I know that my tips earlier were all about kind of more in the spirit of studying and learning and always trying to improve but art can be fun and any stage of the process can be fun so there are many different ways to enjoy yourself even if you're going through a difficult phase in your piece for example if you're struggling with your painting and you know you just for some reason are having a bad art day and everything you're putting down on your canvas turns out to be a hot mess you can instead enjoy the process of mixing colors. You can learn about how to mix colors on your palette better and focus on that. Or you can pay attention to the tactile qualities of painting such as, you know, the sound of your brush against the canvas or washing your brush in your paint thinner and watching the colors disperse. There's so many little details and magical things about painting that are so enjoyable. Um, if you're bored about doing color blocking like in the first initial phase and you're looking forward to doing the details later and just can't wait to get through this color blocking phase, you know, step back and think about how free and uncontrolled you can be during the color blocking. You can enjoy playing with, you know, roughly tweaking the composition or experimenting with something new. And since it's color blocking, there's 
very low commitment and low stress if you mess up. So whatever stage of painting you're in, try to focus on the many different ways that that particular stage of painting can be enjoyable, even if you're having a rough time. And when you have that mindset, you know, no matter how good your painting day is or how stuck you are, you can always find a way to have fun, which is kind of the most important thing that it boils down to is having something that you love that brings you joy. So these are my tips. I hope you guys found them useful and feel free to let me know and let the others know if you have any tips of your own. I love to hear them. And once again, I have prints and stickers available at my website at happyd-artist.com. And don't forget to check out the holiday sale with the code HOLIDAY. And before I leave today, I wanted to announce this exciting collaboration that I'm doing with The People's Print Shop, which is a local print shop here in Berkeley that specializes in fine art prints. And these prints are simply the most luxurious, high quality prints I've ever seen in my life. They're made on luxurious 340 GSM, acid-free, 100% cotton rag with archival inks designed to last 200 years. And I've hand embellished each one with a magical iridescent acrylic paint that shimmers a lavender pink in some angles, but stays invisible in other angles. So there's only 25 of these available Available, and they're each numbered and signed and come with a free 4x6 sticker. I cannot wait for you guys to see them in person. They're so gorgeous. There are only a few left, so if you're interested in grabbing one for the holidays, check out thepeoplesprintshop.com. And finally, I want to proudly share these beautiful coloring entries for my $1 coloring challenge last month. I am so proud of you guys. If you'd like to participate in this month's challenge along with other fun daily rewards, just pledge at least $1 at patreon.com slash happydartist. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you next time. Bye.